Okay, today is Friday, and I have um, a resupply. Uh, it was planned to be Saturday or Sunday. Um, I packed enough food um, for eight days, just in case. Um, and I just haven't had much of an appetite. So I was doing mostly non-cooked meals, and let me just kind of go over what I brought. And uh, so I'll start, like, on the bottom row, left to right. I've got Old Trapper Original uh, Beef Style Beef Sticks. They're kind of like a beef jerky. Um, they were from Walmart. Under that, I have a Best Buy Bourbon. Um, beef jerky. Then on the right, I have three of the four mountain houses that I brought. Um, I don't, I've only had one hot meal since I've been on the trail this time. So today's the, the morning of day five. I've only had one hot meal. And I only brought four because that was more of a treat. Uh, maybe if I got in earlier and had time to cook it or that sort of thing. Next to that, I have the tuna creations. I brought those on the last trip. On the last trip, I ate them every day. This this time, I've only uh, had one. Uh, next to that, I've got a Cars Sweet and Salty Mix. It's a gorp. In the center row, in the silver thing on the left, I've got some, um, well, I just forgot, uh, Pop-Tarts. <laughs> Cinnamon Pop-Tarts. I've been doing this for breakfast. Next to that is some hot chocolate. Uh, in the third row up on the left, you can't really tell what it is, but I've got honey buns. They've been squashed. Next to those are mini Slim Jims. Next to that is oatmeal cream pies. Then at the top, I've got uh, butterscotch hard tack candy. And next to that, I have Starbucks via coffee. So while I'm at this shelter, what I'm going to do is I want to be as light as possible so I'm going to go through this and make sure that I only have enough for three days. I may go ahead and carry an extra day, but I can tell you that I'm going to leave by, behind all the tuna creations except for the sweet and spicy. And I think there's two of those. So yeah, so three of these are going to get left behind. I haven't really been eating them. Um, I'm going to keep those two. Uh, what I, when I do hot chocolate, I do two at a time. So there's one day, two day, and a half. Um, I'm going to keep all the hot chocolate. I'm obviously going to keep all my heat meals. I'm going to keep all that because that works. One, two, three today, and then the next two. I'm going to leave all of these because I've only ate one the whole entire time I've been out here. So all the oatmeal cream pies, I'm going to leave. I'm going to keep all of these. One, two, three, four. I'm going to keep those because they don't weigh much, and the rest I'm going to keep. So basically the oatmeal cream pies and the tuna creations I'm going to leave behind. That is probably uh, 2.6 ounce, three, six, nine. There's nine ounces. These are kind of heavy, too. And there's probably over a, over a pound of food just right there and stuff I'm going to leave behind. So I'll leave that stuff in this shelter for the next person who comes along. And uh, maybe they'll be hungry. Maybe they'll be short on some food. And they can help themselves. Uh, the, as far as the hammock setup, it was alright. It's a little flat line compared to what I like. I couldn't really lay um, at a diagonal. Um, but then laying straight wasn't really like a banana either because the line is so taut. So it did alright. I uh, woke up a couple times in the night. Not for any particular reason. And I slept in my alarm. It's 8.18 now. i got to get packed up and get out there. So... I'll uh, talk to you again on the trail. So it ended up being four tuna creations, a pop tart, and four oatmeal cream pies. If you get these or you find these, I left them. Uh, you're welcome. No need to thank me though. Hikers do this all the time. It's just uh, me shedding my extra weight, and hopefully it'll help out someone else. If not, maybe it'll help the bears out. <laughs> so, uh, there you have it. One thing that I have found out on this trail is if you want anything here, you have got to work for it. All of that for a measly one liter of water.
So you're supposed to cross this creek on these boulders and it says if water's high use an alternate route. What if the water's low and the boulders are just too damn tall? <laughs> you got to be able to get up on top of some of them in order to uh, get started. So I'm trying to find a safe place to cross now. I'm up about as far as I intend to go. And now I'm going to go back down toward the main river and see what's there. Still trying to get across Bark Camp Creek. May have just found a place. I'm going to try to do this uh, while holding the camera. These rocks are pretty large. Always remember when you're rock climbing, Keep three points of contact, which means both feet and one hand, or both hands and one foot, in contact with something solid at all times. So there's about an eight foot jump right there. Oh, that might actually look like the best place to cross right over there. But let me go ahead and look around here. Probably a better place to get water. The water's running a little swifter and there's not as many leaves. But I've already got water, so I don't care. Now, ah, y'all have no idea how much fun this is. Trekking poles in one hand, camera in the other. Whoops. Ah. Huh. It's a lot of effort to get over here. I'm clue. Making it over there slowly. Kind of looks like the best route's going to be crossing small rocks over to there. I have no idea where the trail reconnects. I haven't seen any markers or blazes yet. No paint. Alright, so you see what I'm faced with. Anyways, I'm going to shut the camera off because it looks like I'm going to need both hands for this. The next little part. And, uh... Let me at least shut the camera off and store my trekking poles. That would be the best option right now. Hold on. Well, I made it. I basically come up at Big Rock right there, the lower part of the screen. Um, over those smaller rocks, over to the next bigger rock with the two, two big rocks there at the left and the top right. So, uh, I was at the top right rock when I said this was going to be the route I was going to take. Totally out of breath. I happened to uh, get to the top here. This rock that was at the bottom of the screen actually comes all the way up. This is the edge of it. Quite a ways into the bank. And then I happened to look over. And you can kind of see the trail running right there. So, that was just pure freaking luck. I think that's a trail. Sure looks like a trail, that's where I'm headed. So I stopped and talked to the uh, group of people. They stopped to take a break. And uh, they started at Yamacraw, and they're going up to 192. They've been on the trail now for, I think they said 10 days. And they're averaging about 4 or 5 miles a day. And uh, they got about 12 miles to go to get there before Sunday. Uh, I must be getting close to civilization. I hear a boat. I see a boat, too. I'm sure you probably couldn't see it. I wasn't zoomed in, but... So anyways, I, uh, I stopped and talked to them. It's like two adults that are maybe early 20-ish and, I don't know, six or eight kids that are... They look to be preteen. Um, we discussed bears and snakes on the trail. And then I took off and I told them I would do spider web patrol for a while. And the one, one of the adults in the group said something about... They were just talking about that, so maybe they stopped to purposely <laughs> let me go in front of them. 
to uh, get rid of the spider webs. Um, I'm not sure if they're Boy Scouts or some sort of a uh, boys' youth program, but I remember doing stuff like that as a kid, and I had a blast, and the experience really taught me a lot about life, and really, Boy Scouts is probably why I like hiking so much as an adult. Uh, I remember going to Boy Scout camp and freezing when it was snowing while the adults were in a heated camper playing poker and drinking beer. <laughs> while the Boy Scouts were out in our friggin' single wall tents with 40 or 50 degree sleeping bags and it's snowing outside. Uh, but uh, not to mention any names, Skip Curl, Ed Wiggett, my father, and I believe that was, uh, might have been Jim Putney. I really can't remember now who the third person was, but for some reason I was thinking there were like three adults. And Boy Scouts, I don't remember how many of us. Probably me, David, Danny. Might have been Donnie Gaddis. I can't remember if Sam Odell was in Boy Scouts or not. I seem to think that he was. Uh, I've got a little place here i got to climb over a blowdown, which little short-legged people like me, not very easy because never fails. I can never touch both sides at the same time. I have to do this weird pivot thing to get going. But I'm across it. All right, so I asked them how much their packs weighed because... I took a picture, I took a little bit of video, and I remember just thinking that looks really painful. But the guy told me that they're around 30 or 40 pounds. When they first did their resupply, it was a lot heavier. He said they did that Tuesday. And, uh, I don't know. It looks a lot more than 30 or 40 pounds. But I trust that they know 30 or 40 pounds. And so, uh, man, I would, I would hate to be like, I don't know, 12, 13 years old carrying a 40 pound pack, though. <laughs> As an adult. 40 pounds to me, well, if they're only doing 5 miles a day, it probably really ain't too bad. They're probably taking a lot of breaks. Um, but I'm trying to get mileage in, so 40 pounds would really suck. Plus, my uh, my two Exos packs really are only rated for 40 pounds, and even better if you can keep up below 35 with food and water. So I've rambled on enough, and you have seen a lot of scenery. So, uh, <laughs> blazes are a lot better on the Kentucky side compared to Tennessee. I have to give this to Tully Trace Association. Props on that. Um, it's basically more of the same as pictures and videos. Lots of massive boulders. Lots of rock. Cliff sides. Uh, massive boulders. Massive boulders. Massive boulders. Rock cliff sides. Massive boulders. Massive boulders and rock cliff sides. So that's kind of the way Kentucky is. Uh, a lot of up and down hills. Not like long stretches like in Tennessee where it's five miles uphill. There's another blaze already. Um, but... At the same time, in Tennessee, you kind of expect long uphill climbs. They're gradual. But in Kentucky, it's a lot of sharp up and downs, usually. Think of it like a rough trail. The reason why they call it rough trail is you got five large up and downs in seven miles. That's kind of the way Kentucky is in general. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop you. I can get off here. I know another thing I forgot to mention about the uh, boys group. I uh, let them use my map to show them. Uh, they said they had a map and a route plan, but um, it didn't show mileage, and they were curious how many miles they had to go. That's how I knew they had about 12, um, 8 from where they were at to Holly Bay, and then another 4 from there to 192, the two points they asked about. And basically, they're just walking, and when they get tired, or they find a place to camp, and that's about it. But uh, when I was talking about the find, finding the bear and stuff, I, I was uh, telling a story, and the one boy says, because of the rocks on the trail and that pretty much just kind of sums it up like you don't get as many mileage miles as you think you'll get because it's a pretty treacherous trail and you can't really see it because the leaves on the ground but there are rocks sticking up everywhere hidden by the leaves and you have to be super careful about where you step um, and it kind of slows you down even though I'm kind of going pretty fast right now I'm basically high stepping on my legs then that wears your legs out so uh but, but the boy definitely summed it up. One thing about this trail you'll get to, used to, are all the rocks in the trail. Um, little places like this. You know, it doesn't probably look that bad on camera. Um, which kind of reminds me of something else. See a drop-off, see this rock? Loose, dangerous area. Uh, trekking poles. A lot of the time, don't know if you can tell, there's about a 35, 40 degree angle drop right off the trail. So trekking poles in a lot of the parts of the trail are not possible because... If you saw my hand, I was getting a spider web out of the way. Um, but I just happened to see before I walked into it. So, trekking poles, you can't use them in a lot of places. One, one of two reasons. One, the trail is really narrow, and your left side usually has a drop-off. So, like, all the way down to here, I wouldn't be able to use my left trekking pole. Um, then in the areas where it's wider, 
and you can't use it. It seems like the vegetation's grown up. <laughs> so then the vegetation's getting caught, wrapped up in your trekking poles. And then you're having to yank your trekking poles out of the vegetation. So, uh, there you have it. Uh, I don't really have any tips on that. Other than you have to be a lot more careful when it's fall because of all of the vegetation. Let me go ahead and shut this off. I got a blowdown coming up and the trail's getting hard to follow. Another thing I forgot about, yesterday was a pretty low mileage day. The uh, point between the two shelters, uh, I can't remember the name of the first one, but Bark Camp Creek is the second one. So really, um, kind of looks unmaintained part of the trail. A lot of overgrown vegetation, water sources not too easy to get to. But um, this whole entire trip, the only thing that's really gotten sore is the bottoms of my feet. Uh, my legs haven't been sore, my back's not been sore. Um, I've got the two blisters, one on each ankle. Uh, I'm dealing with that okay. But yesterday, the bottoms of my feet were the most sore they've ever been. And I think that was part of the contributing reason for lower miles yesterday. I don't really know what it was trail mile wise. Seven or nine, somewhere around there. Really low for me. I've been getting around 15 uh, per day. So, I laid in the hammock last night and massaged my feet. And like even the, even that hurts to massage them. <laughs> like you have no idea how bad it hurts to massage my own feet. Uh, it, it was kind of a burning sensation on the bottoms of your feet. I guess there's probably no way to really prepare for that. I mean, my feet are really calloused. I'm surprised I even got a blister. I hike a lot. Never had a pain like that. Um, they definitely seem like they're better today. Uh, and uh, so also while I was laying in the hammock, I did some like a stretches I would normally do if I'm about to have a leg day. Uh, stretches I would do before or after leg day for my legs. I've been doing that not every day, but at least every second or third day. I've been doing some stretching. I haven't really talked about it. Um, trying to pay attention to diet or unexpected fat loss and that sort of thing. Okay, so it looks like part of the trail has washed out here. Um, does not look too easy to get past either. I'm going to try to do this holding the camera. Let's see how this goes. So part of the trail has definitely washed out. Um, it slid down here. Looks like there's a tree there I can step on to get. Try to do this with the other leg first. You can see where others have stepped and slid right on down the hillside. You can see here where the hillside slid, slid maybe about a 12, 16 foot area slid down. Oh, ooh. See, it's shit like that you gotta watch because that can end a hike really quick. And I'm gonna mark this on the GPS. Make sure they know about it. Let me go and shut the camera off so I can get this marked on the GPS and then we'll start over there somewhere. Here's a... Here's another hiker tip. Um, if you're out hiking and you realize that your water consumption increased drastically, that means you have been dehydrated. Um, so I started on the trail around 8.30, got water. By 9.30, I'd already drank a whole entire liter of water. Um, I see water here. Let me go ahead and shut this off and uh, get some water. So my plan is, uh, let me go ahead and finish this segment. So if you consume a lot more water, you've been dehydrated. And what you should do at your next water source is drink a full liter of water. Plus, replenish what you normally carry. So I'm going to sit down here. I'm going to drink a liter of water. I'm going to carry a liter of water in my smart water bottle, and I'm also going to carry a liter of water filtered in my bladder. So that will put me at two liters for the day and two more for the rest of the day.
So this morning it took me about three hours to get from uh, Bark Camp Trail to here, which is about three miles. That's about a mile an hour. There were some difficult areas of the trail um, where I had to go slow. And this says Laurel Dam's two and a half miles and it's now 11.48. So let's see how long it takes me to get there. I've got to admit that I've never seen this before. There are normal concrete blocks that have always been built. But there's a path that goes up here. I almost bet they've got a cave or something blocked off. Probably where kids used to go and party. And spider webs, of course. Can't really see. Let me see if I can get a picture of the flash. So about that little cavish area with a block concrete wall. Um, the flash showed that it actually went back in there pretty far. Um, a determined person could still get back in there. Uh, I didn't go back. I ain't got time to be messing with little excursions like that. I was just curious why there was a concrete wall. Somebody lost their nook-nook. Uh, gonna try to make it to uh, 192 today. If I could actually make it farther than 192, that would be even better. That would put me at a head start for tomorrow. I'm trying to make it to 75 before Sunday. I'm not sure how many miles it is. I'll have to look. But uh, let me get off here and keep on moving forward. So the uh, little mode area when you first leave the boat ramp would give me a false sense of I would be able to make any quicker progress <laughs> on this section of the trail. Um, I'm going to guess pretty much once I got off of that little mode area, which isn't very long, you are back down to between one and one, about well, one or less than one mile an hour. So that means if it's two and a half miles, I'm looking at two and a half, maybe even three hours to get there. Ugh. It's kind of aggravating. It's pretty much the way the whole trail's been. You get used to it, though. Between the rocks and the blue downs and the mudslides and... Or climbing over boulders, rocks. You know, it's just a game of where do I stick my foot next that is going to be the most productive. You can't slide under this blow down. It's right here. You can't go under it. You step off this rock, you're going to go down this crevice. So, I'm short legged. There's a stick sticking out right here. What's going to happen is I'm going to stretch to get over my leg over to there. And I'm going to end up racking my nuts on this stick sticking out. So, let's just go ahead and get it the fuck over with. Yes, I'm cussing. I'm mad in fucking hell right now. Oh. Then you come up here, figure out the trail must go, well, that way, down across more rocks and boulders. Again, you, you have to plan every single step on this trail. There is no bend easy anywhere. And that's the problem with Chitauri Trace Trail. It will never be... It will never be as popular as Appalachian or any other long trail for this very reason. Mark my words. I read some blogs, people who had hiked successfully. The Appalachian Trail gave up on the Chiltoli 100 miles in. Um, two different people that I read, blogs, who successfully hiked. The Appalachian Trail gave up on Chiltoli. Um, now I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go. So I see a blaze over there. Um, I probably need to get water. I hear it. I see some. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to hold out for the next water source. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably butt scoot down this rock. Again, short legs. If I don't fall first. Oh. Uh. Water moving there, but it's probably not pulled up enough where I can capture it. I see it again back over here. Let me take a look at it. I would like to have at least one more leader. Alright, I see a place over here. I'm going to try to get water from this. I'll update later. 
So there's uh, rocks getting over to that water, slick as snot. I nearly fell and busted my ass. Um, then I come over and walk up this log to get up this rock, which is three or four feet tall. And then we're over here faced with this. Fun, but uh, I went ahead and filled up both one liter water bladders, even though I probably have three quarters of a liter in my backpack bladder. Um, the reason being is I read in the trace notes that water, even though you're following a river and a lake, not a lot of good water sources here. And that water back there was ice cold. And that's always a good sign that that water is spring water out straight out of the ground. And always some of the best tasting, most pure water. So there wasn't a lot of leaves in it or pine needles. Whereas a lot of the water I've been filtering has had both. Um, I'm thinking the trail goes this way. Kind of hard to tell. When there's not leaves on the ground, you look for wear on the roots like there. So someone has stepped there a lot. And then you look at the moss on the rocks to try to see where they maybe steps next. I'm not really seeing it, but my mind is telling me that is probably the path here. Um, so that's where I'm going. Sometimes you can tell from the ground, sometimes you can't. There's wear on that root right there. So someone has stepped there. Um, there's wear on that rock and that rock. And it kind of looks like, actually, there's a blaze right there, and it looks like the trail goes that way. And you can kind of see the tops of these rocks all have wear on them. There's no moss. And so, that's the other thing with a fall hiking. If you're unfamiliar with the territory, you rely on the blazes, and where you can't find blazes, you rely on signs of the trail being root wear, moss wear, that sort of thing. Another blaze. Let's uh, go ahead and follow this up to see if that means go left or go straight, and I'm kind of thinking it means go straight. So let me shut this off and get back to hiking. So it's uh, 1.06 p.m. on Friday. I'm uh, still haven't gotten to the uh, Laurel Lake yet. Uh, GPS miles 7.13, which means trail miles 6-ish. Um, but it's 1.06 p.m., and I just filtered my third liter of water already today. Um, again, higher than normal water consumption usually means you were dehydrated. And uh, I, I felt dehydrated yesterday. There was. Uh, water was hard to get to. Uh, excuse me while I eat some more cobwebs. Um, so water was hard to get to. Yesterday was the day I... Uh, had the quicksand-like experience trying to get water from the river. <laughs> Sunk all the way up to my knees in just one second. Um, but, uh, I'm really going to try to get to Miles End and get to 192, Highway 192 tonight, and then reevaluate where I stand. Um, the ankle that I rode, the left ankle, um, has been giving me occasionally an issue where I'll just get a sharp pain. Not really for any reason. Not, not like isolated at only when going uphill or going downhill or it's uh, not in heavy terrain, not in light terrain. Like, right now it's kind of light. Not a lot of rocks. Please don't jinx myself. And I can walk at a pretty decent speed if it wasn't for my ankle hurting. So, there's that. Yesterday I rolled the right ankle too. And so far the pain on it's no worse than the left. So, you know, I'm basically out here hiking with two bummed ankles. So let me get off here and we'll update later. So now I am here at the uh, Glen E. Carey Memorial Bridge to the Laurel River Dam. And uh, wow, looks really, really dry.
This is really a beautiful lake. That water is the bluest blue of any lake I've seen in a long time. I got to admit that uh, that lake is absolutely stunning. The water is pretty clear. It's the prettiest blue I've ever seen uh, since I started um, this hike for sure. Um, wow, just a stunning lake compared to uh, Kincaid Lake where I live. That water is a murky green and Laurel Lake is clear and bluish green. Something about day fives that are the jinx days. This is the pace I'm walking today. Uh, I don't know when it started about the uh, marina. That's when it was. I stopped there and I had a sandwich and a pop. And I got an extra sandwich and a pop on the way. The trail guide said there were like five more water sources before you end section four. And they were all dry. I've got uh, one liter of water. But the blisters in my feet hurt so bad. I'm walking at a snail's pace. Every step is painful. I've taken throughout the day about 16 Advil, <laughs> double what I'd taken previous days, which is about 8 Advil, 2 every 3 hours, uh, and uh, the Advil's still working. Uh, this trail, and this, this is even an easy part of the trail. So, I left the marina with 5 miles to hike in 2.5 hours, and I did make it. But this last mile has been just horrible. I don't know if it's, ah, oh, where I hiked so hard to try to get to the end of this or not. That's probably it, because I was moving at three miles an hour or so. And, uh, because of the water shortage, I already had to drink my Mountain Dew. So, uh, yeah, when I get up here, I've already validated I got cell phone service. So when I get up here at the parking area, I'm going to text my GPS coordinates to my rescue team once again. Come and rescue my ass. Day 5. Chateau Trace, 323 miles or bust. Busted once again on day 5. <laughs>